two thousand yards, just slightly over a mile. Normal rate of fire was two rounds a minute. Gun number two on, your, on the uh, left here, this is an original six pound cannon. It was cast in 1842. It's an original field piece. Okay, as I say, each gun detachment or gun crew, um, as they would be called today, was made up of different individuals and each man had different jobs. We're going to start with uh, the number one position, which is Private Tune. Rolls in his hands a device known as the sponge rammer. On one end is a wet sponge. This was inserted in the bore after firing. It had two, two uh, purposes. The main purpose was to extinguish any burning material left over by the ignition of the powder cartridge. The ordnance rifle had one pound of black powder wrapped up in either linen or wool. It was a self-consuming cartridge, so at firing, it's all supposed to consume itself. However, you can't always bet the ranch on that. So, in order for safety, they would uh, sponge the gun after each shot. The other reason is that water is the solvent for black powder. Sponging the bore between shots cut down the powder fouling and improved your accuracy, which is, which is critical with a rifle field piece. On the other end is the rammer. These are both muzzle loading field pieces, front end loaders. The powder charge goes in first, followed by the projectile. And they have to be pushed from the muzzle down to the breech of the gun. That was what the, uh, the other end was used for. Okay, the next position is the number two position. This is Private Unglesby. Private Unglesby holds in his hand a unique device known as a worm. This is a corkscrew device which was basically used to unload the gun. The gun was loaded, what they would do is push the barrel down and the projectile, because it was slightly smaller than bore diameter, would slide out onto the ground. Not so the powder charge. So they would ins insert the worm in the bore of the gun to grab the powder charge and pull it out. However, we don't use self-consuming cartridges. We use eight ounces of black powder wrapped up in aluminum foil. Aluminum foil doesn't consume itself, so after each shot we have to run the worm down the barrel to pull out the foil cartridge and pull it out so we can load the next round. Number two's other job was that he actually loaded the, loaded the gun. The rounds were brought to him, he would take them, they would be placed in his hand, he would turn with his back to the enemy and insert the powder charge and then the projectile into the muzzle of the gun. Okay, the next man is the number three man. This is Private Insco, who holds on his left thumb a rawhide device known as a thumb stall. This was used to cut off the airflow, <coughs> which naturally occurs in a, can in a field piece. The air comes in the muzzle, travels all the way down, all the way down the bore, and goes out the vent hole at the breech. Put your thumb over that vent hole, you cut off that natural airflow. So if you have something still burning in the field piece, a uh, piece of cartridge or anything, if, if you don't thumb the vent and cut that airflow off, it's like like blowing on an ember. So this was done as a safety feature. The, the, uh, the number three man would place his thumb and thumb the vent whenever the gun was being loaded or sponged. Next job.
open up the powder cartridge, which is in the breech. That's done to open the cartridge. We do that every time. Okay, after the number three man, we have the number four man, the five ball, who holds in his hand a friction primer and a firing lantern. The primer is placed in the vent hole of the gun, and then the firing lantern is attached. The lantern is stretched out, and when you fire the piece, all you have to do is yank on, yank on the Primer. It has a serrated wire coated with fulminated mercury, and underneath that is fine musket powder. You pull on the primer, it's like striking a match. The fine powder flashes down to set off the main charge in the gun. If you don't have friction primers, um, then you're going to be forced to fill the vent hole with powder and touch it off with the lens stock. You can see the lens stock on gun number two. And all it is is all it was is a slow match which was slow burning. You take the lens stock and touch it on the powder, and that's how you that's how you fire the gun. Um, friction primer is a lot more reliable, easier to do, and especially when it's raining. So they were invented about the middle middle part of the 1850s. Okay, the next man we have is the number five man, Private Tucker. Private Tucker is our relay guy at the load order. He goes back to the ammunition chest on the limber and gets around from the number six and number seven man. He's given around, puts it in his pass bag. From there he goes over to the stops at the gunner. The gunner just just go. The gunner will examine what's in the pass bag and make sure it's what he called for. If he called for um, for a bolt or a solid shot, he's going to make sure it's a bolt and not a canister round or a case shot round. So, Private Tucker is the link between the ammunition chest on the limber and the uh, and the gun crew. Okay, the number five and six or six and seven men. ammunition chest held 50 rounds, and it held a variety of rounds which we'll get into a little bit as we fire this next round. Okay, now we're going to take you through the loading and firing sequence. First thing that happens is the load order. Load shell, 1,000 yards. Thank you. 